Hello and welcome to the GMB in Tech show where this week we've got, what have we got? A brand new Santa Cruz high tower. Mm, we've got some TLD custom painted canyons. I've got a downhill specific saddle from Ergon. And we talk about pedal kickback. Ooh, is it yeah. good or is it bad? Okay, so jumping straight into the show this week, and we've been following Williams Racing Products on Instagram for quite a while, making some really cool stuff. You might have seen um, a center hub system for a crank, which this, what we're going to talk about, is a variation of. You might have also seen that they, I'd say you could say mid-mounted a transmission onto a bike, getting an effect kind of along the lines of what Honda achieved way back when they pretty much put an XTR derailleur in a carbon box on those Honda downhill bikes. But anyway, they've had this new product out for a while, uh, and well, how do we even start this conversation? Where are we going to go with this? Okay, so they did their center BB thing, chain ring, which basically free spins backwards and pre prevents pedal kickback, basically. So, kind of like an O-chain type product. Yeah, but it was completely free spinning. And now their new product is free spinning the other way. So just to explain, anyone out there who doesn't know what pedal kickback is, is basically when your rear axle and the rear wheel move, well, your suspension sags in and your rear axle moves away from your BB, then obviously your two chain rings are moving apart. So there's tension on the chain at the top, which will just basically pull on the cranks because it's the path Kick, of least resistance. Yeah, so it feels yeah. like a kickback. Yeah. Um, so obviously we've got we've seen a lot of O chains last year. They were all over the downhill World Cup circuit, and now they're creeping into EWS. I saw a lot of them at EWS Scotland, and everyone seems to swear by them. Like it's like as if pedal kickbacks the worst thing <laughs> in mountain biking, and everyone needs to get rid of it. And I swear, um, I wonder well, if the whole high pivot. Uh, hype from the last couple of years has also sort of made this a thing as well because everyone's like, oh, we can tune out the pedal kickback and all this. And so I feel like O-Chain and, you know, Williams Racing have just sort of come in here and gone, well, here's the answer. No pedal kickback whatsoever. Um, so is that, is it, should we be hating pedal kickback for starters? I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like we've kind of hated it for years anyway. <laughs> Um, I think it's you've got you've got to bear in mind for, for everyone out there, like mountain bikes, they're always going to be compromised because to have all the cool suspension that we sort of pedal the thing. So whatever you do, there's you're going to come up against stuff as far as a design solution goes. And I don't know, braking is the perfect example uh, to use within the same argument. So the effects of your braking on the rear suspension is called anti-rise, there's squat and jack within that. In an ideal world, what a lot of people are looking for now is a neutral feeling. So you basically hit the rear brake and it doesn't do anything to the suspension, which is a cool thing. So it means your suspension will track the ground and do all of that. And then you could say the same with, with pedaling. No, you don't want to kick back, you don't want to feel that stuff through the pedals, which, which is fine. But also, on a flip side of that, sometimes a little bit of chain tension isn't a bad thing. Kind of being able to sort of lean against it and push against it which I noticed by taking my chain off to do that chainless video a while back, like the bike felt ridiculous, felt so good. And uh, you know, the suspension arguably was working better, but when I put the chain back on, I felt so much more confident and able to sort of load the bike differently. So I don't know, like I think there's, mountain bikes are a compromise, wh wherever we go with it. And even these products, as good as they may or may not be, will be a compromise, I think, because you, mm. can't, you can't have a, a perfect thing. There's always things are developing, you know, Let's just say, for, for argument's sake, the O-Chain becomes a product that everyone decides they need on their bikes. Something else will then happen, whether that's the courses get longer, rougher, suspension gets increased or decreased. There'll be another effect then that this product will then either be incorporated into existing drive chains or superseded by something else. Mm. Yeah. I, do, I do feel like I get, I get sucked into it because I ride a lot of variable terrain. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, well, I want to feel nice and buttery down chattery descents. Yeah, but yeah, surely yeah. I don't want any of that, like, you know, vibrations or anything. So this is for me. And then you said, well, without the chain tension, then you can't pump anymore. And I'm like, oh, but that's how I ride. So now I want, so maybe I want chain tension. Yeah, I mean, I feel within like reason. I want like, both. So yeah. like, um, uh, and maybe it's just a horses for courses thing again. Yeah, I mean, like the O-chain, for example, you can have different amounts of the rear rotation that it offers. And that's great, but I think people also forget there's a slight lag when you start pedaling as well. And right. these sort of, I mean, you do get used to it, 
But there's no, there's no doubt when you first try it, you're like, whoa, that's weird. You go to lean on it and it's, nothing really happens mm. until you connect. And yeah, all right, that is just getting used to it, granted. But it's just, it's, I think it's such a specialist product. I think it's for someone that really, really feels the sort of nuances of what's going on. I think it's obviously why the top racers mm. are really dialing into this stuff. But I actually wonder how many people, like, who is it actually for? Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure a product like that's this good for, to really iron out very specific things is for everyone. I don't know, mm. maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I'm just being a dinosaur about it, but. I don't know because I see the benefits of both. Um, in the whole sort of chain tension yeah. problem. But I mean, going back to the Williams race and the new product, the Center Hub, um, he's now made it spin forward. And yeah, he used a term I've never heard before where he said ke pedal kick forward. Oh, look so this out. is a new We've thing got a new we one. need to worry about, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> obviously. So basically it's just that sort of pedal lag of when your chain starts slapping around and it starts moving forward and kind of allows- Trying to move the cranks forward again. Cranks forward, yeah. so instead of kicking it back. So so, and what that makes me think, is that a new, is that a new bad thing we need to worry about? I, I think, it, again, it's like, it will definitely have a performance increase on your bike. So, so these guys have been following them for a while and everything they make seems to be amazing. Uh, the links, by the way, are down there. If you want to watch the video we're talking about, watch it, it's really good. But also, I think that, um, just, just, <laughs> there's, just, there's just so much, there's so much to consider. The first thing I think of, I think, well, that's great, but what's wrong with, a decent clutch and tuning your suspension to sort of take some of that slap out. Well, you could even argue that a clutch mech is like a low speed damper against your suspension working. Because <laughs> on certain bike designs, um, so if anyone out there has got a single pivot that has got quite a lot of pedal kickback on it, try how your suspension feels with the clutch on and off and you can feel it. Really? Not on all designs, but like on some mm -hmm. bikes it's really quite noticeable. Mm. And it's just like, and you think what the clutch is, what it's trying to do is trying to stop the chain moving. Yeah. And sometimes it needs to move. So I, I'm not sure there's like a fixed answer, but mm. hey, I'd like, I'd, I'd like to try the product. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd like to see the difference. I really would. It, it is really interesting. And I've never used a no chain, so I'd kind of like to see that too. Well, I've got um, one, so. Oh, okay. I've got one for a Shimano right. set up on crank, so try it. Yeah. I will try it. Yeah. But what do you guys think? Have you used an O-chain? Does pedal kick back keep you up at night? Uh, <laughs> what about pedal kick forward? Is this a thing that you think would bother you? Um, well, are you going to be worried about it from now on? <laughs> now that it does exist. <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those things that divides people and some people are going to want to pump and some people are going to want super buttery descents. But yeah. let us know down in the comments below what you think about pedal kick back. Should we care at all? Okay, so let's kick the rest of the show off and talk about news. What we got this week then? So uh, first up in news is the new Santa Cruz Hightower. Now in the Santa Cruz range, of course, there's many different bikes, all looking very nice and lovely and shiny. And recently we saw the new revamped Mega Tower, which is the big bruiser of a bike. Uh, but the Hightower sits kind of in the middle there. So you're talking 145 and 150 mil travel, 29 inch wheels. Uh, there's a load of shots of the bike on screen. Uh, Santa Cruz are good at this actually. They send you studio shots, they send you real world shots. You can actually see what it actually looks like with someone on the bike. So they've revised the geometry on here. So you've got a range of different sizes in there. So the small on this now has a 430 mil reach and the extra large, or sorry, the double XL is up to a 520. So pretty much on point with what everyone else is doing now, offering a size technically to fit everyone. But I think we all know that really now you just kind of size the bike a bit more biased to your length, uh, whether that's uh, you want to size down and have a more maneuverable bike or size up and have a more stable bike. It's kind of all open. Size specific chain stays on the bike now, which is always a good thing, because uh, us taller folk have had to suffer with the same size chain stays as people like you'd be riding what? for I've too long. What, I've had to suffer with chain stays <laughs> that you ride? No, average Joe, <laughs> average Joe, like Jack. Jack with his average size feet and his average size head. Um, anyway, so there's slack and the head tube angle, lower the bottom bracket height, and there's more shots coming up. And what you're gonna see here is the glove box. So you've got down tube compartment uh, with a really cool sort of wrap on the inside. In fact, I need to double check the name of this because this did make me laugh. The tube purse. The tube purse. <laughs> and there's a couple of different options of what you can stuff in there. Um, unless, of course, you want to put a sausage roll or anything else in there. Uh, so you've got the tube purse that can go in there, which I think you said is a bit like a pencil case. 
Yeah. I guess you could do that and get your easel out and do a bit of sketching. Well, no one wants their tube the purse on show, do they, really? Um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. I, and then they've got this cool little pencil case, the tool wrap as well, which yeah. basically slides straight in. It looks like an old pencil case I used to use at school. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's the same thing, but different with what other brands have been doing. Uh, so Leverage on the bike now is more linear. Uh, they say it's more progressive. They've reduced anti-squat by 40%, so it's far more sensitive. Uh, in case you don't know, if you have loads of anti-squat, one of the good things is the bike won't sort of move around under your body weight too much when you're pedaling. Uh, but the downside, is, uh, downside of that is your suspension won't be quite as sensitive. So there's always a fine line between there. Uh, and they say it ramps up at the end of the travel there. So it's got a sag window to help the rider see where you're sitting with your rear shocks. Of course, where the shock is, it's always buried under the sort of the wings of the frame there. And lifetime frame warranty and pivot bearing replacement as well, as always with Santa Cruz, mm. which I think they're pretty, pretty good at doing. I that. like that sag window, but that's surely mm. only going to work with rock sharks, who still are the only people who put sag the markings still on the shock. On the, rear shock. Oh, the one, the one in I the picture's just... got rock shark shock on it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone should do that, honestly. Yeah, uh, it's, I would love it's to mega see helpful, to be mm. fair. Um, what you haven't noticed is uh, the um, paint job. Did you notice the paint job? What they called the... them now? I don't know what they called it, but it is like a red smoke. It is unbelievable. I was looking at the one that's a bit more of a, a bluey, bluey green. Good, really? Well, you need to be looking at this oh, hello. red smoke. I didn't, it I look, didn't look at the shots of that one. It looks custom. Whoa. It is unbelievable. So, kind of uh, like an ox blood yeah. almost, isn't it? <laughs> like yeah. a smoke red. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> lovely looking bike that. So yeah. if you're in the market for a 29er, that will go over everything. There you go. Mm, speaking of fancy paintwork, uh, Troy Lee Designs have custom painted, well, they haven't custom painted, basically they've designed a paint job for the Canyon Collective downhill team, which they're rocking at the World Cups at the moment. You've probably seen a nice little teal and white job on the Canyon senders. And now it's available to the public, so you can buy that mm. uh, Troy Lee Designs frame, and it can be bought in the spec very similar to the downhill team. So what we got on there, we've got the uh, Boxer Ultimate Forks from RockShox, the Super Deluxe Code RSC Brakes and SRAM X01 Group Set. Um, it's only for a limited time only, but you can buy the same matching Troy Lee Designs kit as well um, if you want to go full factory out on the trails. I don't know um, what it is about <laughs> Troy Lee Designs, but they just make stuff cool. The He's not that was a really good bike, don't get me wrong, but they just made it cooler. <laughs> yeah. But then I've seen this colorway on the uh, Enduro team as well, so the yeah. Strives are painted up this way. So does that mean we're going to get a Strive um, in a Troy Lee paint job in the near future as well? With, Wouldn't uh, surprise with Mr. Moya on the bike? Yeah, perhaps. exactly, a matching team kit. I mean, the size of your eyes might not be enough to paint, you know? <laughs> Size, small you can framework. barely see the teal. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of downhill related products, there's a new Ergon downhill saddle. So uh, some of you might question why you need a specific downhill saddle, but well, for starters, you've got to be strong because the fact you're always at some point going to end up really heavily sitting down on a the saddle there uh, under a massive compression, lost your foot or whatever, so you need it a good comfortable base there. But it's got to have grip on the saddle as well, which isn't something that you necessarily want to have on a regular saddle because you need to be able to move around. Downhill one, you need to be able to sit pretty fast on the bike. So as you can see on the screen, is a saddle that's got design feedback from Troy Brosnan and Valley Holly on there. Uh, it's an ultra compact design, and they say it's 12 centimeters wide, uh, 23.6 centimeters long. So it's more of a perch than a yeah. saddle, I think. I um, think they don't need much saddle, so they're best off designing something really compact so it gets out of the way yeah. of any big wheels and like sort of full downhill like compression Yeah, and, situations. Uh, and they also, it's got all round padding, so it's padded on the side of the saddle as well, which is interesting because you can't get bruised legs on down the saddles. Mm. Which which yeah, again, absolutely. you don't really think about it too much until someone like redesigns the saddle. Uh, the idea being you can like, lean your thigh, lean your knee, you know, whatever part of your body it is, depending on the position you're in. Uh, Anti-slip surface zones. I think it's a it's a cool looking product. Um, mm. Very niche, obviously for downhill racing. You don't really use it for anything else. Uh, but I think it's a pretty cool product. Yeah, nice. Um, and then over at YT Industries, uh, they've come up with a prototype dirt jump bike. Just when you think dirt jumps dead someone brings out a new bike. So up on the screen here, we've got Eric Fedko's prototype. Um, it's a custom for him at the moment, but you know, is this gonna come into production if it gets enough hype? Who knows? Now, um, unusual I'd like things- I'd to say, yeah. 
Uh, maybe. Because of the roots of the company, which I think is really cool. They kind of started by making dirt jump bikes. Yeah. And it's, it's a nice full circle thing if you think they don't really have anything like that in the yeah, range. Yeah, that's their latest thing. And I feel like people are really getting into slope style at the moment. So is there going to be a sort of a resurgence of dirt jump as well? Who knows? But um, Eric's got this in an aluminium frame because he doesn't like steel, which is quite unusual. Um, but yeah, I just like to think it's a sign of things to come maybe. I think so. Yeah, it does. It looks cool. And um, who out there has got a sort of dirt jump style bike? You know, what do you use it for? Do you use it for pump jacks, dirt jump? Do you be an aspiring slope style rider? Do you race four cross? Uh, just kind of interested because I had a lot of people asking us about four cross recently uh, and just various other things. And it used to be a real entrance to the sport. Um, but these days, I think people are just busy getting on trail bikes and doing like mini, you know, shuttling themselves for downhill. So just kind of interested to see where the sort of 26 inch wheel sort of fun bike market is. Um, yeah, let us know down there. Next up, um, a bike packing related product. This is actually from one of our behind the scenes crew, uh, for Restrap Bumper Bar. So essentially, it's a plate that you would see these that actually fit on handlebars as well, uh, but this one replaces a three mil, um, three mil headset spacer essentially, and it's just up your bag, basically like bumping onto your head tube. Pretty simple product, no frills, $39.99. Just looks neat and tidy, to be honest. I like it. I mean, I've had to fashion sort of like fashion, Amazon. Yes. A word. <laughs> I've just gone to the shed and whittled my out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you get those hideous little extra bar mounts where you can yeah. put 10 million lights and computers on, yeah, Neil loves I actually those. use those to hang my front packs on so that it stays away, away. Yeah, from yeah. the cable. Because it's the cable, it's not just a frame protector yeah. here. You don't want to be hitting you your keep cables. It. Well, and also, it's going to affect things. your steering and stuff as well, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. So I think it's a simple thing that's quite a genius idea, really. Yeah, actually, uh, just weirdly related to that, Topeak make a similar version um, to use with dropper posts, basically, so you can mount a, a pack on there. Oh, on the back, yeah. yeah and it same keeps sort the of bag concept. away Keep from the dropper away. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's brilliant. Yeah, it's I, I've opposite. actually got one of those, oh, so I've used nice. it, yeah. Um, also, we've got a um, full factory suspension have brought out a heat sink for a piggyback. So this isn't the first one I've seen, but we don't see this that often. It's still a cool little product. So basically it fits on a rear shock piggyback and, and just has cooling properties. It's like fins on a Do you see them on an amplifier Is or it? anything else just say. to pull the heat away? So yeah. it, it reminds me, I've seen, I've seen racers using similar products to this over the years. Um, it's a little bit like what you see in radio control cars. Like I did Google it, I mean they're different, but, <laughs> but, but seriously, it's the same thing. You think the electric motors and radio control cars, they get like red hot. Right, sure. So it's actually quite a cool product. So I mean, right? I was thinking about it from a sort of a finned like brake pad kind of pull, pull in the air in. Yeah. But look, I mean, the whole point of a piggyback is to sort of isolate the sort of the heating up of the yeah, damper. Yeah, so, so it doesn't affect the IFP to bring, bring the heat out of the body, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you must be a savage rider if you're heating that up as well, Yeah, surely. I mean, I think the long descent, you're definitely going to do it. But, okay. but hey, if you're suffering from fade and your damper, hey, it's a cool little product. Definitely. Um, also, in the sort of little Instagram tech we've spotted is uh, Fix Shock Bushings, um, which basically gives you not quite a spherical bearing, but allows more play in the shock uh, to move around. So we've seen this from push... Um, the Push 11.6, the new one that came out, Shock, had spherical eyelet bearings, basically, yeah. so that you don't have that kind of twist in your shock as your suspension compresses. So Fix Shock have basically come up with a way of making the 15 millimeter eyelets, uh, and they have that kind of play in it so that you don't twist up your shock, basically. That's, that's really smart. So in the past, when I've been to full factory suspension and uh, TF Tune and various other places, something I've seen on a lot of shocks that have been damaged internally has been when, like your your bushings on a bike basically been binding, they're not being sort of maintained properly right. or replaced, and the shock almost it's like it's been it hasn't physically been bending like this, but it scores on the inside because really? there's a load on the shock. Yeah, and you're, I mean, I don't know this because I don't work on all of these bikes all the time, but I'd imagine on some single pivots and certain types of bike design, you're going to get it more than others. So. If you're reducing that strain on the shock, that's, that's got to be a really good thing. Yeah, well, I think it's a wicked product. It can't just be for longevity. I mean, obviously, you don't want any. Well, the less binding you have in the, the suspension it's system, work. the nicer it's going to feel. Yeah. So, uh, the fixed shock is basically has ten degrees of movement in there. That's loads. Quite a lot. Yeah. Really. So yeah, that's really interesting for such a small product. I think that's. I'd love to try yeah, it. Yeah, I'd be keen to check those mm -hmm. out as well. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, wicked stuff. 
Okay, time for the quiz. So I'm just going to rattle through these, but it's all kickback related oh, now. So yes. let's start there. off with what actually is pedal kickback. And then next up, why does gearing matter with pedal kickback? Think about it. And why would a hub with more engagement be potentially bad for a bike with high pedal kickback? Oh, now you're getting techie. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. Good question. Now. Stay tuned to find out the answers. Okay, let's dive into some comments now um, from various videos of recent times. Of course, I did a mullet video that went out at the weekend. Um, I'll dive straight in here with one. So this is from Slow Worms. It says, this is such a good test because like Dolly said, Anna and Dolly are completely different riders, completely different heights as well. Great test. By the way, I'm 5'6 and I still like 27 and a half inch front and back. I'm really hoping the industry doesn't move away from 27 and a half inch wheels. We had quite a few of those actually. Yeah. Still loving the 27.5s. Yeah. Oh, there's, and, and for anyone in any doubt, there's nothing wrong with 26, mm. 27 and a half, or 29. Yeah, all right. So 26, arguably you'll see them on less bikes, but don't forget, we had we had 26 inch wheels for like a whole lifetime of biking. So plenty of spares out there. So don't not fret about it. <laughs> Uh, so Abner de la Cruz uh, says, I definitely prefer mullet and I just bought a Bronson 22, which is a dream to ride. I think Anna was faster on the mullet because she was used to it. Uh, something we discussed, wasn't it? Um, I think she had more time on the 29er, she'd be faster. Uh, I also think it depends on the track. And it has not slowed down Loic Bruni, who won a few overalls, uh, as well as Jesse Melamed on the 29er. He's I mean, sorry, it's slowed him down, but he mullet. actually he, he increased his speed from 27 <laughs> front, 27 off front of the rear, so it kind of goes the other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, of course, and we did try and say, like, a test scenario like that, you can't do every single possible thing, otherwise you'd still be making a video. <laughs> um, we just wanted to get a little idea of roughly against the clock and roughly against how it felt for yeah. ourselves. And yeah, we're well aware on different courses. I know for a fact, if I was riding something longer and rougher, like 29 would have been like miles quicker and there's no way I'd enjoy a mullet on it for the way I ride. Probably, yeah. But, but it's interesting to still see the mix out there in EWS, isn't it? Yeah, and Corey says, I personally prefer the way a mullet feels compared to full 29er. Um, even if I'm not actually faster, I feel faster. And I like the way the trail is muted like it is in 29. I'm not going for lap times or racing, just fun. Yeah, you've basically summarised exactly how I feel. Feeling fast is half the battle, isn't it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so Tim Sadler said, I moved to full 29er setup this season, straight from 27.5. Uh, I love how it just blasts through over and down rough stuff, but damn, it's hard in tight corners. Yeah, but you, you For adapt me, to it. I think it is. I yeah. think there's there's definitely a thing with 29s, not just the physical size of in this, you know, this will be the whole axle height thing, and it's the way you've got to tip them in. It almost feels like there's mm. a bit more commitment to tipping it in, whereas 27 off just moves around so much easier. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much what you said there. And I guess that's why people are liking the mullet, because you've got the stability up front and you've still got that low factor to tuck in on stuff. Uh, next from Green Gonzons, uh, fun vid. Yeah, being comfortable plays a massive role. I've just started riding 29s and it feels Smoother, but Strava says I'm sitting on the same average speed as 27 and a half. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Sonif four wheel. Um, I'm definitely suffering from some sort of confidence understeer problem in the corner since moving up to 29er. Yeah, I think a couple of people put this and I certainly find it harder. And like we said, I think you're just going to have to be really more committed or, I don't know, stronger maybe a little bit. Yeah, but... and of course thinking, you know, as you would anyway, but thinking more about your lines. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, with cornering, the setup is more important than anything else. You know, control your speed on the way in because you're going to be able to carry that speed through. And I think it can be easy on a 29 anyway, at least if you're coming rough into a turn, to come in with too much speed. Yeah. And then you're kind of like, you've got the worst of both things there. It's <laughs> hard at a corner, arguably, and you've got the too much speed. Um, next up, Christopher Watson. Love it. Dolly joined the mullet crew. Never thought it would be possible. <laughs> no. Um, Welcome yeah. to the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Cross says, great video as always, guys. I get the argument to see both sides, for and against. However, how much does a mullet setup affect climbing up the trail? Perhaps you could explain. Um, I'm not well, convinced it would affect it. 
that much. Uh, so I switched over to mullet, and obviously the the big difference that you'll notice is the sort of gearing ratio changes because obviously your wheels got smaller, mm -hmm. so you've got less sort of contact patch over a, a certain distance. So it feels like an easier gear. So for me, up steep climbs, it felt easier just by sheer changing the back wheel. Um, but I do think I'm actually slower as a result because I'm just pushing a spinnier gear. So um, I don't know if that's particularly scientific, but hopefully that makes you sort of think about it. Um, I, and, and when you're talking scientific, Noria Sylvan's answer, where <laughs> they say uh, Doddy needs a 32-inch front wheel. Yeah, we've I, had a couple I, of these. So I'd like to see a <laughs> mullet with 32 up front and 29 in the rear, says WX. Well, GCN have got a ridiculous bike. Is that a 36er? <laughs> I can't remember. Do you know what that is? 36. Yeah, I've got a wheel custom built, uh, a bike with custom built around 36 inch wheels. But it's got drop bars on it currently, but our mechanic in the workshop was actually uh, getting the right brake levers and stuff for it. So we can use it for a video. Um, be interesting. The thing weighs an absolute ton. And it's disgusting <laughs> as well. But... I can't wait for you. But yeah, no, we'll just leave it on that. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah, yeah I thanks for coming. See you on a 32 inch bike. 36. <laughs> 36. 36. So I want to ride it up every flight of stairs I can. <laughs> Okay, we've got a bike cave for you this week. We've got a couple Yay. of bike caves, in fact. So please don't forget, if you've got a cool shed, or even if you've got a terrible shed, share it with us. <laughs> could be a shed, could be a garage, could be the loft, could be the basement, cellar, literally anywhere you keep your bikes. We want to see them. There's a link there, and there's another one down there. Get involved. Now, the first one this week is, I mean, this looks awesome straight away, from Justin in Alabama. Uh, he's got a 2022 Specialized Fuse Comp 29-inch hardtail and says, what's up? Um, I love you guys in the show, therefore I wanted to share images of my air-conditioned 330 uh, square foot single car garage converted into my bike shop stroke bike cafe, um, bike cave, <laughs> bike cafe. Uh, I've equipped it with Wi-Fi, smart TV, mini fridge, bike storage, tool storage, work, work desk, and even a small aquarium. Nice. <laughs> Wi-Fi lights can be controlled via smartphones, customize the mood for working on bikes, <laughs> watching GMBN. It's like casting it with our little bike brothel light we got up there. We turn out the main lights, so it gets all a bit like warm and seedy in here. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you're after the same sort of effect as us. Speaking of CD, he's got two lava lamps in there. Oh, I haven't classic. seen those since the early 90s. It's amazing. Sometimes they just go weird and it turns into like one big blob and just floats, and that's when you like to skip them. <laughs> Hey, that's cool, I love it. So you've got loads of stuff going on in there. The aquarium does actually look good for some nice sort of ambient light, I like it. Load of helmets up on the wall, bikes stored vertically. Good space, actually. It looks bigger than a single garage we have in the UK. Mm. I mean, I American cars are be, massive, aren't they? they? Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's real nice. You've got all your coolers and stuff sorted down there. Plenty of tools and stuff. Got your washing machine and stuff. Decent. <laughs> love it. Skeleton, a little bit weird. But, and, uh, and your Halloween mask as well. <laughs> nice work. And what we've got next? Oh, I just noticed the TV. Who's on the TV? That's not you and it's not me. It's not me. It's Park Tools though, so we'll let you off. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> but loads of good stuff there from Justin. Uh, tool board, all the good stuff there. Love it. And next up is from Andres in Colombia. Nice. I love it. We've got viewers literally all over the world. So this is, he's got Commissar Meta AM29. Get in the cave the right way. Love the channel. Thanks. Cheers. Forget Sorry. the cave. Forget the bike. That bench with the coil shark. I haven't got to that image yet. <laughs> the coil shark. So shot. I'm still going through them. Oh, man, you've been a fan for a long time of all these old MBAs. <laughs> nice. Oh, yes. Look at that. Yeah. There's a little coil spring on his... Like and a part, giant parts tray as well, so you can put your tools in it as you oh, scoot around. That's oh, that's brilliant. I need one of those. Can we make one of those, please? Yes. I love that. <laughs> So if you wonder why we're looking at this, the images aren't flipped. So <laughs> looking at a bit of a funny angle here. <laughs> Loads of racking. Flip it, you've got a lot of products on that shelf at the back there. That's like a bike shop. Yeah, I'm it? guessing you must work uh, on motorbikes and stuff as well, or... You or he's got, got a little part-time part business, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, decent tool storage, nice bike artwork going on there as well. Uh, can I spy some Park Pro Allen keys just down there as well? Exciting to me. Yes, yeah, they're with nice. the little spinny. Things. The spinny spinnies, yeah. I'm loving that little little stool. That's awesome, isn't it? That's great. Oh, look at us. Look at us two geeks up on oh, the TV. And uh, if we, you want to send us one of those little uh, spinny spinny chairs, that would be <laughs> that'd be fine by me. Yeah, that's if you want to do that. That's well, it's fine. made by Craftsman, or it's got a Craftsman cover on it. But that's <laughs> good. 
and use your bike racks as well. Oh, nice, you've got one of the bike racks that sits in a bike bracket spindle. Hey, if they work on your bike, those things are awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, really good. Great for traveling as well, take with you in the back of the car or the van. Oh, man. Oh, I love picking people's garages. Um, <laughs> keep them coming. Keep some great ones coming into us and we'll put you on the show. Okay, so we've got some quiz answers now. Hit it. Oh, so uh, what is pedal kickback? It is basically when you sink in your suspension and the uh, rear axle moves away from the bottom bracket and puts tension on the chain and pulls on your cranks, which effectively kicks back your feet on it the pedals. It is indeed. And why does getting, uh, sorry, why does gearing matter for pedal kickback? Well, if you think about the tension of that chain on your rear cassette, if it's on a bigger cassette, like an easier cassette, then obviously, you know, two or three degrees of movement is gonna pull more chain. So it's actually gonna give you more kickback. So uh, if you've got a bike that has a lot of kickback, you could actually pop it into just harder gear when you're descending and maybe it would lessen it. Yeah. Um, so why would a hub uh, with more engagement be potentially bad for a bike with pedal kickback? Uh, well, because if it has more steps of engagement, then it's gonna engage quicker and therefore it would pull back on the chain sooner. So you'd get that um, kickback a lot quicker, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you had, you know, arguably a cheaper hub with less engagement, you've got more sort of freedom Free of movement, movement before the kickback happens. So yeah, you can all, almost get a bit go. of O-chain with a yeah, really cheap hub, <laughs> ironically. If you need that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so high engagement hubs aren't everything for every bike. Mm -mm. Just goes to show. You know, I've, I'm pretty sure I've, I've heard super high engagement hubs before on certain bikes and courses where you hear mm. that chain and you hear it as it's mm. being ratcheted backwards by the chain. Yeah. Which it's is pretty a nuts. Mild modern obsession, which I'm not sure is entirely that amazing. No, it's gotta it's gotta work for what you do. I mean <laughs> if you if, if you rely on actually just getting the power down straight away then quick pickup is actually pretty essential. Mm. Which, uh, hey we could uh, we could chat about all this sort of nonsense all day long. <laughs> Um, put it straight in the comments as you always do. Uh, keep it clean, and we'll see you on next week's show. <laughs> <laughs>